What happens when one city starts igniting from food riots and they don't want you to report that to the next city? You know, information flow is dangerous today because the people that are in power or consider themselves in power have no control over it any longer. It's a genie out of the bottle. ADAPT 2030 Mini Ice Age Conversations covers change in our climate due to a new and intensifying grand solar minimum. In the media, overlooking, downplaying, or burying cold weather changes occurring on our planet. This is in order to keep the global warming agenda steaming full speed ahead. I do this podcast and radio program because we need to begin conversations on how to adapt our food growing strategies long before 2030 as agricultural zones shift, affecting global crop output, but very few mainstream media outlets are talking about the most important issue of our time, cold weather crop losses. Our sun is going through a 400 year cycle, which has effects on our weather patterns as our magnetosphere weakens and the jet streams go out of flow. It's not CO2, it's not you, it's the sun. Are you ready to thrive in the grand solar minimum? Then join me for many Ice Age conversations. I'm your host, David Dubine. Now that's in China. And they have their own system, and they have their own thing going on over there. We globally, I guess, have accepted it. So it must be part of the plan. So the Chinese are trying to perfect this, you know, and they're getting really good at the control and flow of information to the point where in that country, and this includes foreigners as well. Don't think you, if you're a foreigner, you're going to go over and visit, that you're outside the loop of this. This includes foreigners as well. If you have any kind of Weibo account or any type of the social media within China, Tencent, or anywhere you're floating around inside that sphere, if you as a foreigner share that information too, you are eligible for arrest in the country. And I want to focus on the weather here for a minute because I had some people, I will not even say who they are. I'm not even going to tell you if it's man or, man or woman. I'm going to protect them that much. Sent me some photos of some massive, massive floods over in Sichuan province. They were not allowed to talk about this. The government had come out and said it was a small flood, and there were a couple homes that were flooded. But I've even put these images in a couple of my videos where they have entire homes floating down the river, buildings collapsing into the river, whole towns completely washed away due to substandard construction, uh, drainage ditches breaking open, dam basins broke, all these types of things that were just poorly constructed malfunction with the amount of water coming down. You should have seen the floods It was biblical, and entire parts of the city were washed away. Now, people were arrested for sharing some of the photos, not the photos that were given to me, but for sharing that very same story that the the state-run media in China had said, oh, just a couple homes flushed away, and that's all you can report, period. And people went out and said, no, 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 look at my backyard. I have all these photos, and I got this thing on my phone, and here's my social account, and, and I wanted to show you the footage. Man, I can't believe like a quarter of our city washed away. They were arrested for sharing weather stories because it wasn't approved by the state-run media. The videos weren't approved videos. See, this is where it's going. Is those videos that were shown of those houses and parts of the city being washed away, those were non-approved videos. They weren't approved by the state government to be released to the public. But citizens released them, and that was a no-no because it wasn't approved. And speaking of cycles, my new book with my co-author Bill Porter, Climate Revolution, a must-read for understanding our sun-driven climate. As we progress deeper into this new eddy grand solar minimum, weather extremes leading to global food scarcity and higher food prices are here now. This book describes the expected changes, how to survive and thrive during future challenging times, and also practical preparations The entire book is interactive with over 250 links. You can click and go out to the scientific aspect of what we're talking about with the repeating cycles in this grand solar minimum. The science is explained so you understand the mechanisms. The solutions are there because we know we're going to face these exact same problems again that were faced in the Maunder minimum, the Sporer minimum, the Wolf minimum. Find designs for building greenhouses, grow guides, Beam soil techniques as well as bioreactors to create your own growth hormones for the soil. Available now, the new ADAPT 2030 Climate Revolution. The link's in the description box below. 
Now, we're going straight into the ministry of truth here with this, that the European governments think that they can actually take control of the planet's Internet. You know, China hasn't even tried that. China's just happy sitting over there controlling China within their own little bubble and having their own little firewall up there. Great. Let them do that. But look how far it's gone there that they've actually implemented those laws to arrest people just for weather stories that weren't approved. Now, where are we going to go with this? This is the first caveat and the first foot in the door to do the exact same thing on a global level here. Here's the thing. They snuck that upload filter directive, Article 13, in at the last moment in the vote. It wasn't there before. Just the link tax was. And they snuck that in and everybody voted on it and said, great, we're going to approve this. This was not up for public debate. This was not up for public scrutiny, public viewing, public review, public comment, zero. This was a full-on secretive agenda passed by the oligarchs to control your ability to, to pass information. Now, I think that this is all to stop the flow of information of the grand solar minimum when the crop losses get to the point where it's going to destabilize governments. Because how many percent of the bottom population cannot eat before they start to throw a spanner into the works here? Let's say 10% of any one country. It could be anywhere. I'll even use the United States because a lot of you listening tonight are from the U.S. I'm from the U.S. I know this culture the best. I can talk about it. Let's say the bottom 10% on food assistance cannot afford their basic necessities due to the food tripling in price. And something happens where the government can't keep up with the food costs because it's happening too fast. So the laws they're passing... To raise the EBT or the food assistance programs is, you know, six months behind, maybe eight months behind the real cost of the food. And these people start riding in the streets and, and you know, looting supermarkets and banditry like we saw down in Venezuela where they were stopping trucks on the roads and just pilfering anything of food off the trucks. I saw this most incredible video. I'm sure you can look this up. They stopped a chuck with 5,000 chickens on it. And there must have been two or 300 people out there, and they just went up and ripped these boxes of live chickens off the truck, just toppling them onto the highway. And people were running out, smashing open the boxes with the heels of their shoes and you know, grabbing chickens. Oh, was, you need to see the video as to where it can go when people get desperate. So let's go back to the mind experiment here. Bottom 10% of any country can't afford to eat at all anymore because food's too expensive and then the next year is going to be even worse because the crops are going to be diminished further in the yields. From this point forward, I tell you what, this is the last year we have had stable harvest seasons on this planet, at least for the next decade. Now, it's not going to last indefinitely and no, it won't. We're going to go through a small correction and a squeeze point for humanity here. So you can move out, you can come with understanding, not fear, You can find your niche, you can help people, you can create a difference, and you can provide value as we move forward. That's the reason I do the channel. That's the reason I spend my time here. I got two hours I've been talking to you. The reason I spend my two hours here is so we're all in this together, and I hope you're more informed, and I hope we move together as an informed body of people. What happens when one city starts igniting from food riots, and they don't want you to report that to the next city? You know, information flow is dangerous today because the the people that are in power or consider themselves in power have no control over it any longer. It's a genie out of the bottle, and it's not going to be put back in. So the the global corporate-controlled media is going to have a very specific narrative to feed you and push your emotions. They know what to say. They know what stimulus to give you, so you will react in a certain way. The outcome's already known. They've been studying this for what, a century or more? They know if they push button A, you will do reaction B. They already know that. They're not going to want you sharing information on what's happening. Hungry people are desperate people. They're going to be doing crazy things that it's, you know, some of these movies that we see about the zombie hordes walking around, I really believe that's what it's going to be with the masses of starving people. They just switch it. They're trying to say it's a virus. Well, what if it is a computer virus where you can't get money out of your ATM. The just-in-time delivery credit system broke down, created all these zombies because they can't eat. They're walking around looking for food, hordes of them. Maybe if you just switch a couple little pieces in that narrative in those movies, it makes more sense. And the World Wide Web inventor Tim Berners-Lee, at least Wikipedia, it's all based on linking out to other links 
that provide credence or credibility to some of the pages that are in there in Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia in itself, you could go on for days and days about censorship inside that platform and how you are unable to edit or add edits into those pages on Wikipedia that are on sensitive subjects. Like go into the global warming page and try to put anything about solar cycles, not going to happen. That is one of the most tightly controlled pages on Wikipedia. They have people on those pages 24 hours a day, seven days a week to scrub whatever kind of edits come in. So you can see where we're going. Now I want to come back to talk about the Gutenberg printing press. I'm going to take you back in the 14, 1500s here. Gutenberg printing press, 1600s, modern minimum, same time, right? Ottoman Empire forbid any type of typesetting in Arabic language and forbid anything or anyone to have a Gutenberg printing press. If you had a Gutenberg printing press and you were caught in the Ottoman Empire with the printing press, you were alive. That is crazy how badly they did not want that in there. They were afraid of the spread of uncontrolled information. This is not a new thing. This goes back century, millennia. This goes back millennia when people were terrified. Roman Empire, terrified that you would spread information. Go back into Russia. Anybody who even had a typewriter in Russia was arrested and sent to gulags because, again, they were afraid that you could spread information that was non-state controlled, not state authorized. Ottoman Empire, Gutenberg Printing Press, rest of Europe adopted the technology, and the Ottoman Empire was left in the dust, never to return. They have not led on anything in the last, what, 100 years? So you can see that trying to suppress technologies that allow communication often backfire. Now, the Ottoman Empire was just a single point on this planet. So it bordered itself and roped itself off. No printing press in there. No technology like advancement inside ways of communication. But the rest of the world outside was thriving and flourishing and spreading information and sharing and finding new ways to communicate. And then from there, there was the next step and the next step and the next step. But where are we now when we come to this? It's a global thing. So I'm wondering if the same thing's going to happen with this internet censorship bill that's out of Europe. If it's not a cohesive action amongst all member states in the EU, I think that it might not work. I mean, you see what, what has happened so far with the EU trying to regulate the rights that you give to a website to collect your data for privacy. Some websites have just banned everybody from Europe coming. That was one simple way. But again, it's like the Gutenberg printing press. Do you ban everybody from coming to your site? I mean, how much of your traffic's from Europe? How much revenue is that going to cost? How many possible communication networks could that knock down out of your network by just banning Europe altogether? So it seems that a lot of people have taken the steps to get the privacy data. So every time you click onto a site, you have to click that little button that says, yes, I understand you're collecting this. You can put a cookie on my computer. You can do all this, all right? So a lot of sites and companies have gone through the trouble to accommodate the European laws on the Internet, and it spreads globally. So then you have to think about alternative methods to communicate. Are we talking about going back to the ham radio? TrueLeafMarket.com. I really want to talk about growing your own food, which will be a necessity moving forward. There's so many ways that we can go about growing different types of vegetables that we're going to need. You know, microgreens are incredibly nutritious. They're super fast to grow. In less than a week, you can have something that you can eat. Also, sprouts. We can get those a little bit taller, a little more dense, a little bit larger volume on the vegetation mass coming off of there. So how do you know what kind of sprouts to grow? How about wheatgrass or herbs? What about different types of herbs that we can add to our foods? Now, what I just described to you, there's a full range of starter guides there at trueleafmarket.com for you to take a look at. Even if it's just for your own knowledge and you don't purchase something from them, at least get the information so you know how to grow microgreens, you know how to grow sprouts, you understand what some of the herbs are for. Trueleafmarket.com. Use the link below and give yourself the gift of organic and heirloom seeds. Your life will be in the hands of this internet law. If you cannot share information on where the losses are happening, where you can access food, where you can find food, what's happening, where the riots are, what's happening, where the shipping channels are open, where the banks are still working, where everything's still functioning, and you have an access point to come in and draw resources to you, well, they're cutting off your lifeline, literally. We're, this is a crossroads of humanity right here, whether we accept this or do not. 
And you really need to look into what's happening with this particular set of laws going on and really the reasons they don't want you to communicate amongst each other. It's not about that they're trying to stop it. It's the reasons that they don't want you to communicate. Nor will you be able to even know what's going on in the outside world. You see where we're going with this. Like how far are they going to take it? But they have a very, very short time window to do so because the changes you're seeing, they're already amplifying. And this is just the cusp. Like all these food crop losses and the 13% inflationary food price structures going on across the planet now, that's just the beginning. 10% this year, 70% next year, 150 the following year, and you're looking at double prices, right? At what point do they start to make the scientific data copyright so you can't share it? They're going to start with the thing, oh, you can't share movies. Fine. We already did that back in the Napster days. Can't share music. Now they're coming down to you can't even share a news story. They're going to go back to the Gutenberg printing press days, and they're going to become the Ottoman Empire. They're going to fall so far behind because our ability to communicate in the new tech world is miles ahead of that. How about going old school like the ham radio? Can you imagine how ironic it would be if, if the new information dissemination and the biggest stations on the planet were ham radio operators that were going against? <laughs> That's funny. Think about that. What about buying your own satellite? I mean, there's satellites for rent. I mean, you got to go outside the box here. If people are going to try to cut down your ability to communicate, you're going to have to be a couple steps ahead of thinking, all right, what can I control around my own local environment that I can still use to disseminate this information. Should I buy my own private satellite, one that's almost defunct and not really used by any networks anymore? Should I buy that and use it as my own private satellite? How far can you go? What do you think are ways that we could communicate without having to rely on traditional internet? That st messages could still be pushed across. Because remember, they've been telling us, and I'm going to come over here to Dr. Roy Spencer's site, They've been telling us again and again and again, it's the hottest year ever, and oh my gosh, if you just even went outside, you melted. You know, the roads across the planet all melted this year. People couldn't even drive because every road on the planet melted. It's kind of the message you received. Well, here we are, the August temperatures. This is off the University of Alabama Huntsville satellite temperature data set. Version 6.0, which is the peer-reviewed version. You got to realize the temperatures dropped from July globally. They should have gone up in August, but they dropped. This video is brought to you by our friends at TrueLeafMarket.com. Heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet. 